Hi, I'm Dr. Sri Ganesh from uh, Netadama Super Speciality Eye Hospital and I'll be posting videos uh, almost every week. Um, some of them are teaching videos and some are interesting cases that I have done. And uh, if uh, you like my videos, hit the like button and press the bell notification to get notifications whenever I post a video. Hey, uh, this week we present to you a case of intraop uh, complication. This was a PCR that occurred in this case, uh, which was posted for uh, toric IUL and its management. A complication is not a complication if it does not affect the final visual outcome for the patient. A complication is just a deviation in the surgical plan. This patient was uh, posted for uh, femtosecond cataract surgery with the toric IUL. You can see that the femtosecond laser is already done. We make the uh, entry and uh, you can see that hydro dissection is being done and uh, viscoelastic is put into the anterior chamber. Phaco emulsification is started. As you can see, this is a grade 3 plus cataract, fairly dense. And the nucleus is divided and separated along the nucleotomy and then emulsified. Similarly, the quadrants are eaten up. And this is the last fragment which is being uh, removed and you can watch very carefully now there is a sudden surge when I'm uh, removing the last fragment and then the PC suddenly comes up and there is a punched out PCR because the PC has hit the phaco probe now you should be very careful and um, bring the fragment away from the area of the PCR and then put in viscoelastic to tamponate the vitreous from the AC and then uh, very carefully if there is no vitreous then you can go ahead and remove the last fragment. If there is vitreous in the AC then you will have difficulty in removing this fragment the fragment is removed, there are a few small uh, remnants which are just expressed with uh, visco. Uh, but when uh, you can see that there is some amount of uh, vitreous which comes out which is again recognized by the distortion in the uh, PCR uh, margins of the PCR. So we go ahead and do an anterior vitrectomy. So the irrigation uh, port is introduced to the side port and then a vitrectomy is performed to remove any vitreous. Uh, you can be sure that you have cleared the vitreous once the margins of the PCR are not distorted and are clear. If uh, the PCR was not punched out and uh, regular then I would have gone in and done a PCCC. Here uh, I am using a coaxial IA uh, which is not ideal when dealing uh, with such a situation because as you can see uh, it is difficult to reach the subincisional cortex and when I remove the probe again the vitreous prolapses. This is again because uh, there is hydration of the vitreous with the coaxial cannula. I go in again and uh, do a vitrectomy to clear the vitreous from the anterior chamber. You can also use uh, triamcinolone uh, if you are not able to visualize the vitreous strands. But here we are able to make out uh, the distortion in the capsulotomy which is an indirect uh, method to assess if there is vitreous in the AC. Following that I switch over to a bimanual IA. A bimanual IA is more controlled in such situations and uh, you just keep the irrigation cannula in the AC without taking it uh, deeper and then uh, strip the cortex very carefully 
you can see that it's very easy to reach into the capsule of onyx with the biomanual IA and strip out the cortex. Note that the um, blob of viscoelastic which is there near the PCR is not disturbed again because uh, of the very uh, gentle irrigation aspiration and with the bimanual bi IA you are not hydrating the vitreous. So this is the last part of the uh, cortex which is being removed and you can see that there is no distortion of the uh, PCR margins which show that there is no vitreous prolapse. And you can still see the blob of uh, viscoelastic which is just behind the PCR. Once this is done then before removing your irrigation cannula you put in viscoelastic to maintain the chamber and remove the irrigation cannula. You can again note that the margins of the PCR are very well defined and clear. There is no distortion. We put in the toric IOL through into the capsular bag. For a toric IOL especially, you should ensure that there is no vitreous in the antechamber or the bag as this will prevent proper placement of the uh, IUL and uh, it will not remain on axis and it can rotate postoperatively. So once the IUL has been placed, the um, visc viscoelastic is remain removed and the wound is hydrated. You can see that the lens is very well aligned and does not move. Also it is very well centered as it is in the bag with a good overlap of the rexus margin. You can see that the PCR, the punched out area, there is no distortion because there is no vitreous tugging. And this is a sign that uh, you have cleared all the vitreous and the lens would be stable. This is the first day post-op uh, photographs of uh, this patient. The patient has 6'6 six, six, uh, uncorrected vision for distance and you can note that the IUL is very well centered and aligned. Also the residual refraction is uh, negligible and uh, the patient has a good outcome. Some of the take home points uh, from this video are one, uh, when you are removing the last fragment, it is better to reduce the flow rate in vacuum so that there is no sudden surge and upthrust of the PC and this will prevent a PCR. You can also stop and put in some viscoelastic before removing the last piece and uh, remove, bring the last piece into the anterior chamber and emulsify it. When you have a PCR, if it is a punch, punched out kind of a PCR with clear margins, then you have to very carefully put in viscoelastic before you withdraw your probe and you can remove your fragments if there is no vitreous. If there is vitreous in the anterior chamber, it is better to deal with the vitreous and do an anterior vitrectomy before attempting to remove the fragments. If the PCR is irregular and if there is a tear, then it is better to convert it into a PCCC uh, with strong margins so that it does not run off. The other aspect is uh, to use a bimanual IA rather than a coaxial IA. This prevents hydration of the vitreous and you can remove the cortex in a more controlled manner. Cortical removal is always done after completing the vit Vitre uh, vitrectomy and removing the vitreous. If there is vitreous in the anterior chamber, then it is difficult to remove the cortex. If you are placing an IOL in the bag, see that you have cleared the bag and the AC completely of uh, vitreous. Otherwise, the lens will not center well and the lens axis of the lens may shift, especially in a toric IOL. You can look at the margins of the PCR, which gives you an indirect clue as to whether there is a vitreous prolapse and vitreous in the bag. If visualization is poor then you can use triamcinolone to stain the vitreous and you can see that strands and do a thorough vitrectomy and see that there is no 
vitreous in the capsular bag before implanting the lens. Once the lens is implanted, again look at the margins of the PCR and see that they are not distorted. This again gives you a clue that there is no vitreous coming into the capsular bag. If vitreous comes into the ca capsular bag, it can decenter the lens or misalign the toric IOL. Thanks for watching.